Good morning, friends, and welcome to Friday, May 21st. Thanks to Barb Baker for getting us started this morning. Friday's devotion is from the Upper Room Discipline, written by Susan Muto. And our scripture this morning is Romans 8, 22 to 27. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies, for in hope we were saved. Now that it is seen is not hope, for in hope who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The readings so far have been pointers to the Apostle Paul's declaration that the whole of creation, wind and rain, seas and mountains, fields ripe for picking and deserts plagued by drought, all that has been made and held in being by God, especially all of humankind, has groaned for the day of the Lord. And the groan that arises at times against our will signifies that there is another transformation that we must undergo from the alienation of sin to the adoption of grace. For Paul and for us, the hope of salvation is what has kept us from despair. Fortified by this virtue, we wait for the coming of the Lord with patience and unshakable trust. Seeing our sincerity, God mercifully sends us an advocate who assures us that though we were weak in power, we are strong in faith. When no words of prayer rises to our lips, we can proclaim the truth that we are not alone. When we do not know how to pray, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit, intervenes and prays in us with sighs too deep for words. All too often our minds become clouded with endless questions and confusing responses. Our attempts to reach self-perfection Come to naught. Now is the time to descend from the distractions of a busy mind to the longings of a faithful heart. Here we ponder the unique command that God intended for us from the very beginning. Here the Spirit calls us to conform to Christ in obedience to the will of God. We make this intercession in abandonment to God's providential plan for our lives. Though we may not understand how it will unfold, knowing that the Spirit prays in us is enough to assure us 
that a divine light will be our guide. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, and remove whatever obstacles prevent us from hearing and heeding your call to be holy. Teach us to say with Jesus, Yes, Father, your will, not mine, be done. Amen. Our closing hymn with Mary Austin is Every Time I Feel the Spirit. Grace of the Holy Spirit and God be with you. Amen.